Well, hello again, and welcome back to the Straight A Nursing Podcast. I'm Nurse Mo, and I'm extra excited about this episode today because so many of you have been asking for information on this topic, and I'm thrilled to bring it to you. So this is episode 205. We're diving into nurse residency programs. So if you're getting ready to graduate or just thinking about your prospects after graduation, you definitely want to stick around for this episode. Now, before we dive into into it, I always love taking a moment to recognize and appreciate and thank those of you who take the time to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast platform that you use. So this shout out to my San fam goes to AR. So reach out to me and send me an email if this is you so that I know your name. All I know is this is AR who says, I started listening to Straight A Nursing in my nursing prerequisites. I always dreamed of the day I would be listening to them while studying in nursing school and now I am. I'm in my nursing program and I'm doing so well on my exam exams because of this podcast. I'm so thankful for Nurse Mo, and she also always answers any questions and messages and is super loving and helpful. She has a big heart and mind. She's a great teacher and is always putting her all into every episode. AR, thank you so much. That means the world to me. I appreciate not only that the podcast helps you, but that you took the time to share that. So thank you. Thank you so very much. Okay, so let's dive into it. Are you graduating from nursing school soon or eventually? (laughs) Then you're probably starting to think about your first nursing job. And for many of you, that could be a nurse residency program. So this episode is generously sponsored by HCA Healthcare, which has a robust nurse residency program where new nurses are surrounded by a community of experienced nurses and fellow nurse residents who really work together to help you build a foundation for your career at any of their 184 hospitals across 19 states. Plus, what I really love about HCA Healthcare is that it goes so much farther than that. They offer tuition reimbursement, they offer student loan assistance, and they have these defined pathways and continuing education all designed to support and encourage new nurses. So not only am I really grateful to them for their support of the podcast, but also the support they provide new nurses through their residency program. So in this episode, I'm diving into all the details about nurse residencies, and I'll be talking a little bit more about HCA's program as well. So what is a nurse residency program? Why are they needed? How are they structured? What do you look for when choosing one? Let's dive into it. A nurse residency program, which can sometimes go by the abbreviation NRP, is a structured new graduate orientation program designed specifically to help new nurses get the skills, the confidence, and the support they need for a successful transition into practice. Sadly, many new nurses actually leave their careers before they even get a chance to thrive. I looked at a 2020 study by Souter and Painter, and I'll link to these studies in the blog post associated with this article. So if you want to dive deeper into it, you absolutely can. This 2020 study showed that 17% of new graduate nurses leave the profession in their first year of practice, and up to 30% leave nursing in the first three years. That's a lot of nurses. So not only is that a lot of careers and career dreams completely shattered, it's got a high cost. So it has a high cost for the people that went through nursing programs and paid all of that money and all that tuition without a payoff. It's also really expensive for the hospitals. If you look at the cost of replacing one nurse, it can range from between fifty-two dollars to $90,000. Studies also show a high cost in a correlation between high staff turnover and increased patient mortality. Furthermore, in 2011, the Institute of Medicine submitted a report on the future of nursing and recommended nurse residency programs be implemented as a key change to help meet increased healthcare demands. So they're definitely sorely needed 
and very, very important. So the next question is, how do they help? So that first year on the job is one of a lot of change, really intense change, intense growth, and stress that is pretty far beyond what many new graduate nurses are prepared for or even expect. So by going through a nurse residency program, new nurses are able to work through this really critical transition period and adjust to the realities of the profession in a supportive and nurturing environment. And I'm not saying any of this to scare you guys and make you think it's going to be the most awful experience of your life, but that first year is tough. And if you're in any like Facebook groups or med Twitter or anything like that, where you're hearing from other new nurses, you're seeing that they've had a bit of a shock when they transition from student to new grad. And a residency program can really help smooth out that transition. And as I was going through all the evidence and reading, uh, you know, peer reviewed journal articles on this subject, I found it really interesting that the evidence definitely shows a correlation that new nurses who join the profession through a nurse residency program show more competence, they make fewer errors, they report less stress, and report greater job satisfaction, and all of this leads to them staying in their jobs longer. So they're very, very helpful. So the other thing that I got really curious about as I was researching this topic is, well, how does the the resident, how does the nurse resident feel about this? It's one thing to look at what it does for the hospitals and the cost savings and all of that, but how does the actual person going through the program feel about it? So what I learned going through it is it was really clear that nurse residency programs are pretty highly valued by those who participate in them. One of the most common experiences that is shared by new nurses is this feeling of overwhelm, right? Um, Thinking that you should know more than you do, uh, feeling that the stress is unbearable. A lot of new nurses start out on night shift and they can feel a little more um, alone in that because there's not as many resources on night shift. So the stress is compounded with that. So there's just a lot of room for helping new grad residents or new grad nurses feel more supported with these programs. So with this structured nurse residency program, nurses report feeling less of that feeling of overwhelm. They feel supported by their preceptors and just general overall more confident. One study by Helms and Walker looked specifically at a nurse residency program in Alabama, and they wanted to see if that program met that hospital's goal of providing the support and the mentoring, easing that transition into practice, all those things that the program set out to do. And some responses included things like, I could tell the difference between me and the people I graduated with who did not go through the residency program. I knew more than them in certain areas like policies and procedures, et cetera, and things like that. When you feel confident and competent in understanding how the hospital works, you're going to feel more capable at your job and a lot less stress, I promise you. Another nurse said it helped me transition into the role of nurse. Perfect. That's exactly what it set out to do. Another nurse said, as a student, I looked at things one way. And after the program, I could see more of the bigger picture. And that is huge, you guys, because this is one of the biggest shocks when you transition from student nurse to new grad nurse, because there's just no way for school to show you the whole entirety of the job. And I thought I had a pretty good handle on it. No way, no how. When I started practice, I realized school, even the many, many clinical hours that I did, probably showed me 10% of what a nurse does on a day-to-day basis. So being able to see that bigger picture would be absolutely huge. And then the last example I have here is a nurse in this program stated, the program opened us up to more than what the instructors taught us in nursing school. We saw things from another perspective. And again, it's just that school can't show you everything. It's going to show you what it needs to show you so you can pass your licensing exam, so you can be minimally competent and clinical. But the job itself, I'm telling you, school only showed me about 10% of it. What I learned on the job, what I saw, what I understood as the nurse's role 
so much bigger and so much more. So I am one of those people that went through a nurse residency program, and I'm so, so glad that I did. And I'll talk about that more in just a moment. I do want to hit on retention just a little bit because I know you're a nursing student or you're a new grad. You would hate to think that you're going to leave the profession in the first year or three years of practice. So the evidence does show that nurse residency programs have a positive impact on retention. One study that I examined looked at a 12-month program in California And this program had a one-year retention rate of over 96%. So if you compare that to the other statistic I shared, where about 17% are leaving in the first year, a 96% retention rate is pretty darn good. And then another study showed the cost associated with that. And it showed an estimated cost savings of $735 to $7,988 per new graduate nurse. Studies have also shown that nurse residency programs increase job satisfaction and improve morale. And then additionally, one other thing to note is that graduates of these programs do kind of tend to show a more likelihood of moving into leadership positions. So as you can tell, I'm a huge fan and maybe you're starting to be a huge fan too. Something that we should talk about because of just the times that we live in right now are that nurse residency programs really are needed now more than ever. With COVID-19 interfering with and disrupting so much of nursing education, many new graduates at the time of this recording are entering their profession without as many clinical hours as they would have normally had. So in one study, it showed that less than 3% of students attending nursing school during the COVID-19 pandemic were able to complete their full clinical experience requirements. Less than 3% got their full clinical experience. And many students transitioning a bulk of their hours into that virtual experience, which there is value in virtual experiences and sim lab, but it's not the same. It's not the same as dealing with an actual human with way more possible responses to everything that you could do. It just adds in giant layers of complexity to be working with actual people. And to think that so many students are missing out on so much clinical time explains why transition into practice could be a bit bumpier for nurses right now. In addition, COVID-19 created a lot of clinical obstacles, such as preceptorships getting canceled for graduating students, loss of specialty rotations, and exclusion of entire patient populations, like maybe you didn't get to go to anything in pediatrics. You lost out on an entire patient population. New nurses report feeling really nervous about their clinical skills, feel really unsure about their clinical competence due to these gaps that were part of nursing education during this time and and expressing a lot of fear around making mistakes or not knowing enough critical information. Of course, these are factors that new grads state with or without a pandemic, and they are going to be factors that new grad programs attempt to address. It's just that it's more pronounced right now. So let's talk a little bit about how nurse residency programs are structured. Now, they can vary, obviously, in the way that they are structured, but there are some general elements that they have in common. So nurse residency programs typically are going to combine a classroom component along with bedside training with a preceptor. So working with a preceptor will generally follow one of two key formats. There's the patient-layered orientation format and the task-layered orientation format. So in that patient-layered 
type of orientation, the new grad will share a patient load with the preceptor and gradually increase the number of patients that the new nurse is responsible for. So this approach enables you to work a lot on time management and prioritization skills as you're taking care of a patient as a whole. And it is generally, right now, the more common type of framework that is used. Now, the task layered orientation involves taking over specific tasks for the entire patient assignment, and then adding on additional layers of tasks as you gain competency. So an example of this might be you start out, let's say you're working with the nurse and you've got four patients. Your first part of your training will be doing all the physical assessments and all the charting of those assessments for all four patients. And then as you gain competency in that, we add on another task like, okay, now you're going to do all the physical assessments, all the charting for the physical assessments, and give all their PO medications. And you get good at doing that. And then once you're ready, now we're going to add on the IV medications. And then from that, now we're going to add on etc, etc, etc. Now, this isn't as common as the patient layered model, but studies are looking at this as a really, really viable and beneficial way to teach new nurses at the bedside. So you may see more of this coming up. Now, these classes can be monthly, even as often as weekly, depending on the structure of the program. And many programs will utilize simulation as well to help solidify clinical judgment and assessment skills in that safe environment where it's okay to make mistakes because you're going to learn from mistakes in that safe environment. And many programs will also include classes, competencies on things like communication in the healthcare setting, time management, Ethical decision-making could be covered. The scope and the standards of practice, also very key to understand, and even stress management. It can be tough to transition from a student to a professional nurse. I remember when I started out as a new grad in the ICU, talk about feeling like a total imposter. I felt like I had no idea what I was doing. Did I really even belong here? And to say that my anxiety was through the roof was an understatement. But then I started with my nurse residency program and it really made all the difference. And that's why I want to tell you about the nurse residency program with HCA Healthcare. Now, this program supports newly graduating nursing students at those early stages of their careers. HCA Healthcare's year-long nurse residency program helps first-year nurses transition from the classroom to working in the field with confidence, develop critical thinking skills through hands-on clinical experience, and get support from a community of caring, experienced nurses and fellow nurse residents. Plus, nursing residents get access to a range of opportunities to learn from specialists in various areas like the ER, ICU, and surgical services. Not only that, HCA Healthcare's nurse residency program comes with other great benefits like tuition reimbursement and student loan assistance, 401k matching, clinical instruction by subject matter experts, continued support from mentors, and more. Build the foundation for your career at any of HCA Healthcare's 184 hospitals across 19 states. Students who are preparing to graduate and recent grads are eligible to apply to the nurse residency program at HCA Healthcare. Learn more today at careers.hcahealthcare.com slash residency. Again, that's careers.hcahealthcare.com slash residency. HCA Healthcare, an equal opportunity employer. So what are you going to look for in a nurse residency program? So there are a lot of different factors that you could look for in a nurse residency program. So some programs are accredited through the CCNE, which sets standards around program design and implementation. But it does not mean that a hospital that has not sought accreditation is not a very competent program. The one I went through, not accredited, 
But when I looked at all the things that they did, they absolutely did all the things that accreditation requires. They just didn't go through the step of seeking it. So don't automatically discount a program because it's not accredited. Look at what the program offers, okay? The program length is recommended to be at least six months, and in a lot of places, it's 12 months. So if you look at Benner's theory of novice to expert, she estimates that 12 months is that average length of time to get from novice to the advanced beginner. So a lot of programs follow along with Benner and provide 12 months of support and training. And then there is a supportive work environment So a quality residency program will have full support of the entire organization, including nurse leadership, including the staff nurses working on the unit, the nurse educators, and upper-level administration. So you want to make sure that there's buy-in from everyone. And then you also want to look for evidence-based practice. The curriculum of any residency program should be evidence-based. And a lot of these programs will even require something like an evidence-based practice project before culmination of that program or graduating from that program, like a poster presentation or the development of a quality improvement Project. So, for example, nurses in HCA Healthcare's residency program develop a poster presentation at the culmination of their experience. This is invaluable. It teaches you how to utilize evidence based practice, find relevant research articles, um, come up with a plan on how it would be implemented in your unit. It's just a really great way to start thinking in that nurse leadership role, always, always improving practice. And then the other thing you want to look for in a nurse residency program are defined outcomes and competencies. The curriculum of that program should be very clearly defined with objective goals and benchmarks to measure your success. You also want to make sure that the program you are applying to has trained and passionate preceptors. Training a new grad nurse takes patience and a ton of skill. Preceptors should be trained in leadership skills, in effective communication, and giving constructive feedback. So a lot of hospitals will provide their preceptors with a course on how to be an effective preceptor. That is definitely something that you can ask when you go to your nurse residency program interview. And then the didactics. Again, that classroom time is absolutely important. And you want to make sure that there is a didactic component to your program. And this can include um, classroom discussions, case studies, problem solving together as a group, review of important concepts. And then with that, the value of being in an environment with other nurses going through the exact same growth struggles as you are is absolutely invaluable. So there's just a ton of peer support in that environment as well. So I've mentioned HCA Healthcare, and I have to be really honest with you guys, I've been so impressed with the design of their nurse residency program. I want to just tell you a little bit about the things I really like about it. So first of all, it's a full one-year program, 12 months, which is, again, that average recommended length. Again, if you are a Patricia Benner fan like I am and follow along with the Novice to Expert journey, you do know that it takes a while to gain that clinical competency and a new grad program that walks along with you for that whole first year is absolutely amazing, amazing. And then the program at HCA Healthcare involves monthly seminars, which are fantastic, and simulation. These are both really great ways to learn in a safe environment. Again, this is the environment where you want to make the mistake, right? Because I don't know about you, but when I make a mistake, I learn way more than when I just do it right the first time somehow. So if you can make a mistake in a safe environment, you're going to remember that lesson. So providing nurse residents the opportunity to do that, ask questions, explore is absolutely invaluable. You also have a mentor and preceptor who provide that continued support as you go throughout the program. Plus, I know a lot of new nurses want to start out in a specialty, and a lot of times you hear, no, you have to start out in med-surg, you have to do that very broad level of nursing first. 
If your heart is set on a specialty environment, HCA provides opportunities for training in specialty areas like the ICU, the emergency room, and even in the operating room. And then with HCA, you also get your core career certifications while in that residency. So you're getting your ACLS, you're getting your BLS, even your NIH stroke scale certification and crisis prevention certification. And then probably one of the biggest because nursing school can be really expensive. And if you're looking at continuing your education, they do have tuition reimbursement up to $5,250 per year for nurses who are going to school to advance their degree. So that is absolutely fantastic. And then they have student loan assistance as well and 401k matching. And I know I work with a lot of nursing students. I know that financial stressors are really big factors for new grads. And I appreciate that HCA Healthcare goes that extra step for their nurse residents. So you can apply online at careers.hcahealthcare.com forward slash residency. And the last time I checked their page, uh, there were new grad openings at hospitals all around the nation. So if you're looking for a supportive environment, you're looking for a hospital system that fosters an environment of both personal and professional growth, then definitely check them out. They do accept applications from students who are graduating in the next six months, all the way up to nurses who have already graduated but have less than six months experience at the time of applying. So I benefited fantastically from a new grad program. Like, I don't think I could have survived my first year without it and would love for you to experience that same level of support as you transition from student to your new grad nurse self. So keep all of that in mind as you are exploring nurse residency programs. I want to talk a little bit about some of the questions that you could ask in your nurse residency program interview whether it's with HCA or any other hospital system. So these are all listed on the blog post that accompanies this episode, so don't feel like you have to stop and take notes. I'll make sure there's a link to the blog post article in the episode notes for you. But some things that I would ask if I was going to a new grad residency program would be, What are the requirements and the time commitment of the program? Because maybe there's so many, you know, hours of class time versus so many hours of working on the unit. I want to know what my time commitment is. How do you measure success in this program? Absolutely. When you know how success is measured, you're far more likely to meet those benchmarks. I would want to know how the program is structured, what type of training would be received. For example, do they do the patient layered approach, the task layered approach? Do they have their own system in place? How does it work? How am I going to receive my training? Are there scheduling requirements? Like, for example, if you're working with one preceptor and your preceptor works every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then are you required to work every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? What are the scheduling requirements and is there any flexibility with that? You also want to know how many days you'll be in the classroom or simulation each week or each month, however it breaks out. And I definitely would ask about your preceptor situation. Is it one preceptor? Is it two? Is it one preceptor and a backup? Will I have more than one? Is it just whoever's available that day? Is there a dedicated preceptor? Hopefully no more than one or two. You also want to ask if you're getting exposure to both day and night shift. I think that's very key to get exposure to both. And you could also ask about typical patient ratios on this unit. Typical patient populations, what kind of disease conditions do they have? You want to know what kind of patients you'll be working with and what you'll be learning. Another good question along those lines is, will I be working in one dedicated unit or will I be getting exposure to different types of units? For example, my sister-in-law did a residency program in mother baby, but it was pretty varied. She did um, labor and delivery. She did postpartum. She did high risk. So she got exposure to a bunch of different types of units in that environment. You also want to ask how long you'll be working with the preceptor before you're expected to work independently. And that's going to vary based on the acuity of the patients that you are seeing. 
You want to ask about a contract, if there's a contract for the program, what the terms of the contract are, if there is a contract in place, and anything else related to that specific unit. So let's talk a little bit about what my nurse residency program was like and my experience, okay, you guys? So when I graduated from nursing school, it was a whole different job market back then, thousands and thousands of applicants for each and every position. When I got my job in the ICU in the new grad residency program that I went through, there were about 5,000 applicants per position. It was really, really impacted. Different job market now, lots of nurses, unfortunately, leaving the bedside, retiring. Um, COVID took a big toll as well. So there may be more job availability right now, which is great because that gives you a lot of options. And hopefully there's quite a few different nurse residency programs for you to choose from. I got my interview basically because of really good networking. Um, I had gotten a scholarship from the hospital system that I applied with. I got some kind of award at graduation from the hospital that I ended up applying with. And as a part of that, I had met one of the recruiters at one of these events. And so she remembered my name. And then when I applied, I reached out, we talked, and I got the interview. So that's how it worked for me. Right now in this environment, I'm not really sure how it's working. I know that students are getting offers before they even graduate, which is kind of exciting. So again, for me, completely different job market, but I did start in a new grad residency with about 11 other new nurses, and we were all sprinkled throughout the hospital in different units. I went to the medical intensive care unit, and then others in my cohort went to med surge, oncology. I want to say there was one that went to labor and delivery. There was like uh, cardiac care, um, neuro, ortho, just all over all kinds of different units in the hospitals. And for the first, I want to say about 12 weeks, we met once or twice a week in a classroom environment, which was a lot. It was very, very supportive. We had support group time with that where we weren't learning anything. We just sat and talked about issues we were facing, how we were feeling, how we were transitioning, which is really helpful. And it honestly was probably one of my favorite parts about the whole experience. So that was built into our schedule with this classroom time as well. So that was the first 12 weeks. In addition to that support group time, there was also classroom didactics with um, lecturers and sim lab experiences. So that was the first 12 weeks. And then for weeks like 13 to 36, we started meeting instead of so often we started meeting monthly and we had a monthly seminar. And then we also did various activities in the hospital where we shadowed different interdisciplinary team members for, I, I want to say about four hours at a time. So I would go in for four hours and shadow the wound ostomy nurse. That was really interesting. Um, another time it was respiratory therapy, which was great. I got to learn about that job and that role. Rapid response nurses, a pharmacist, um, there were other, I think maybe a stroke nurse was another one. So it was really eye-opening. I think physical therapy was another one. So we got to just go around with different people from the interdisciplinary team and learn about that role. Because when you understand their role, you better understand how your role as the nurse can help integrate all of that into your patient's plan of care. And then for the final weeks or like week 37 to the end of it, which was a year long program. So week 52, we had one seminar per month. So it just kind of it phased out as we went along, but we were still very supported throughout the whole 12 month. And the seminars covered a lot of different types of topics. One of my favorites was how to interpret lab values. You know, in nursing school, you feel like there's so much focus on knowing what the numbers are. Well, when you're a nurse, it's more about how you interpret it and what you do about that information. So we had uh, a seminar on that. We had seminars on calling a stroke alert and what happens in the hospital with that, what your duties are as the nurse, your assessments and all of those things. Managing a patient with sepsis, which is a lot to do. So we went through that in a simulation, which was really interesting. We went through the organ donation process, 
core measures for all kinds of things like stroke and heart failure and all those things, uh, acute coronary syndrome where the patient has, you know, where the hospital, again, has core measures that they are trying to meet. We even went through postmortem care and what that involved. We reviewed basic EKG stuff and lead placement and recognizing dysrhythmias and what do you do about it and just a lot more. So it was just, it took all those most important things from nursing school and taught it in a very, um, a framework very aligned with application knowledge. Here's what you're going to do with this information, with this knowledge, and how you're going to manage this patient. Because I worked in the ICU as a new grad, I went through extra training on top of that. It was The program I went through was called ECHO. I think that stands for Essentials of Critical Care Orientation. It's very robust training. I went through that. That took a quite uh, several months to get through. And then um, we had simulations as well. And overall, I would say it was just a really great experience. And I would definitely, definitely recommend if you've got two jobs and, you know, dollars to donuts, they're pretty similar as far as what you're looking for in a facility, but one has a new grad residency program. I would weigh that very, very heavily in your favor because it is so, so valuable. So I really hope that helps give you an overview of nurse residency programs. Um, If you would like to learn more about it, I invite you to go to HCA Healthcare's website and explore their program. It's absolutely fantastic. It hits on all these high notes that I just mentioned. And I do want to thank HCA Healthcare again for sponsoring this episode and helping get the word out about the benefits of new grad residency programs. It was such a helpful thing for me, and I know it can be really helpful and beneficial for you. So again, explore openings, explore details about HCA Healthcare at careers.hcahealthcare.com forward slash residency. That's careers.hcahealthcare.com forward slash residency. And of course, HCA Healthcare is an equal opportunity employer. So I will see you back here next week as we talk about pediatrics, looking at a very interesting congenital heart condition called Tetralogy of Fallot. So I will see you back here next week for that. Bye for now. This podcast is brought to you by Straight A Nursing.